Welcome, welcome, Sean Thomas here with Ask a Millionaire. Thanks for those of you that have submitted some questions. We're gonna get started in just a second. As a reminder, if you submit a question in the Ask a Millionaire portal, I will answer, I will perform a video here in the private Facebook group. My assistant will download the video and upload it to the YouTube channel for you to watch the entire session if you would like. But my assistant will also send you an email with a direct link to where I am answering your question on the video. Super cool process. I use this in my everyday business with Accelerators Organization, which is my business mentoring company. You can see that at acceleratorsorg.com. If you're a startup entrepreneur doing under a million dollars in annual sales, then check out Accelerators Organization. There's 27 mentors like myself who provide guidance and assistance and resources and connections to help your business grow. Let's go ahead and get started with today's session. The first question comes from Samuel, and Samuel says, where can I find successful salespeople in the photography business and more specifically in the NFT space? The background is I am a photographer that discovered this new emerging market of NFTS, which is a very interesting and new way of selling digital art and prints. I have great creative content, but do not have the time to solely focus on selling my art. So I would need to hire a professional con connected in the art and crypto world who can not only reach out and find collectors, but handle the social media aspect. We'll love to know your input and what do you think of all this? Let me know and I'm looking forward to hear what you have to say. I appreciate your time and help. Regards, Samuel. Well, Samuel, I am a millionaire, but I do not have any experience within this field. So the best thing I can do is tell you what I would do if I were in your shoes. I'd probably start out with a Google search just to see if there are any agencies that specialize in uh, brokering deals for artists. And I'll tell you what, I also have... Um, let me see if I can find her user, her uh, account name on Instagram. There is a member of my mentorship group, Accelerators Organization, and this uh, person, Dar, let me see if I can find her. Oh, I'm going to try to find her Instagram handle and get that to you, but she has mentioned to me in the past few months that she has really been digging into the NFT space and... I trust her. I know she's a legitimate person and she might have some additional resources. And as part of Ask a Millionaire, I'm more than happy to make any introductions to you. Uh, so I will try to find her information and I'll get that to my assistant. And when she sends you your question or your answer to your question, I'm going to see if she can include the person's um, name and email address for you to contact her and see if she would be open to providing you any guidance. This is one of the things that's called the power of association by connecting with successful people like myself who have an expansive network of people. We're gonna know a lot of people to connect you to. We may not know the answer ourselves, but the ability to connect with people in our network is very, very valuable. Um, I tell you from a personal opinion, I think it's, a, it's an up and coming space. It's brand new, open waters ahead. I say go for it, learn as much as you can. Just as, just as any type of business, Samuel, you're gonna need to be a master of craft in your, in your space as an artist, and then you're also gonna have to become a master in business. You know, there have been lots of uh, contestants that have won The Voice and American Idol and other uh, con contests where their name is in front of millions and millions of people, and they are extremely talented, right? yet they never go on to be as successful as Kelly Clarkson and Carrie, Bratch, Carrie uh, Underwood and many others. The reason why is those artists surrounded themselves with the right management, they did the right work, they built the right networks, and they, they continue to master their craft not only as an artist but in business as well. So as you look to build out your business as an artist, make sure that you understand you, you're gonna have to know both sides the artist side and the business side. And that's how you can become another well-known artist making millions of dollars, okay? I hope that helps. The next message comes from Freskina, and Freskina says, how do I start with no money at all? The background is, hi, I've been following you on Instagram for a while now, and I absolutely love your page. I've been changing my jobs ever since I started working because I never really liked any of my jobs. I saved up $10,000 and it took me a while. Unfortunately, I lost everything and I really don't want to go back to a normal nine to five job. I'm 23 years old and I feel so much older from all of the working. My question is, how do you start all over again with no money? 
Well, Francina, I would sure love to know how you lost $10,000. I surely hope that it wasn't because you fell for one of those online trading scams in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin or Forex trading or what have you. It's a very dangerous game out there in that world. And it, even though it looks like there's a lot of people making money, the majority of people are losing money. And I hope you didn't get caught up in that. If you did, consider it a valuable lesson and you only lost $10,000 because I know people who have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now listen, you know, I've answered this question many, many times. The only place you can start is to get a job unless you have some sort of translatable skill in which you can become a freelancer. I really would need to know a little bit more about you and your background, where you live, what kind of skills you have, what kind of jobs you have had in the past to really give you personal advice for your situation instead of just generic advice. But I'll tell you this, you mentioned in your question that you've been changing jobs ever since you started working. Whenever we're going to utilize our time in exchange for money, which is part of the first phase of, of, of growing any type of uh, wealth or financial independence, if you're ever going to switch a job, switch it for a higher paying job. A lot of people make the mistake of quitting a job and then going to work somewhere else for the same exact money or even less sometimes. Remember, why do we work? There's only one reason that people work. One, it's to make money. If you're going to work and get paid an hourly wage, you might as well be earning the most money you can, right? I would enjoy my job a heck of a lot more if I was getting paid $100 an hour as opposed to $15 an hour, wouldn't you? There, I have had crappy jobs throughout my life when I was in your phase, and I did the work because there's a saying, hate the price, love the prize. I hated some of the jobs I did, but I did them because I loved the paycheck, because the paycheck allowed me to accomplish my goals and start investing in skills that would help me someday start my own business. Those skills were mainly sales skills, business skills, learning how and what it takes to truly run a business, because I knew I did not want to work for somebody else the rest of my life. I've been on many podcasts and given many interviews. If you'll go to the link in my bio on Instagram, and you click on the About Sean section, you'll find quite a few of those interviews and you can hear a little bit more about my story. But listen, starting over with no money again doesn't mean you're completely starting over because you have knowledge and you have skills and you have experience and maybe even some people in your network. So you are farther along in the journey than you were when you first started out. We know we never ever start over. We might start over financially, but we don't start over from scratch because we always have more experience as remember that. So listen, a reminder, hate the price, love the price. That means even if you don't like the job, do a great job, make as much money as you can and save as much money as you can. Because if you're like me and you want to be the first, first generation millionaire of your family, you're going to have to do things that other people aren't willing to do. And I'm not saying illegal or unmoral or unethical. I'm just saying you're going to have to work harder. I had to work harder. But here's the cool thing. Most people won't. If you will, you'll succeed. Okay, it's that simple. If you will do what others won't in order to succeed, you will succeed. So make a plan, get started, stay focused, stay disciplined, and continue to ask some questions in here and would love to help. Okay, hope that helps. Have a great day. Okay, the next question comes from Mohammed. And Mohammed says, confused regarding career and want to know real purpose of life. The background is, hello sir, my name is Aziz, I'm from India. I graduated in civil engineering domain in last year. I'm really confused, sir. Actually, I'm getting less pay in my field. My friends are switching their career into IT because of higher salary. Few senior friends and went abroad, they are earning good amount of money by listening that I'm easily confused. What's your advice? Second question, how do we prioritize if we have equal goals by considering end result? how to find purpose of life. I admire you, sir. I hope you will clarify my doubts. Thank you, sir. So this one is very difficult disease because our language difference. This is one of the challenges that I have with people that I meet on Instagram that are from countries like yours. We speak a different language and we have different backgrounds, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Okay. Um, I have many Indian friends here in the United States, and I also have Indian web developers that I've built relationships with over time. I don't think it's too much to say that there is plenty of opportunity in India. And you might start at a low level right now, but if you follow what your friends are doing and you go after developing the skills that are required to get higher paying jobs and eventually maybe even start your own company, the opportunities are there. 
The question is whether or not you are going to do what it takes to get there. I always say this, if you don't know how to do something, go find somebody who does and network with them. Work for them. Pay them to coach you. Pay them to mentor you. Because it is extremely difficult and very challenging to learn how to do things ourselves when nobody is there to show us. Even though we all have the same access to the web and to YouTube and to podcasts and to articles and to videos, it just isn't the same as making a connection with somebody who will be willing to show you the ropes, show you how things work. I can tell people what they should do in their situation and it would, it would shock you how many people just won't do the work. I can give them the, a laid out path of exactly what to do and they still won't do it. They still think there's another way. Um, so my advice to you would be uh, to, to try to hinge your success to somebody else's success. Meaning, somebody who is far th farther along in the journey, go see if you can work for them and learn from them and help them build their company in exchange for the knowledge you're going to get and the compensation you're going to get. And you're going to have to develop skills that relate to higher income range if you truly want to find financial success, whatever that means to you. Now, as far as you finding the purpose of life, I'm not a guru, I am not a therapist, I am not uh, the type of person that can help you figure out the priority of your life. That's something that you're, just like myself, you're going to have to do your own research of what you want out of life. One of the ways that you can find inspiration for what you want out of life is to take a look at what's out there in the world. You live in India, but there's a whole big wide world out there. All you have to say to yourself is, let me take a look at what's out there and what is appealing to me at this stage of where I am right now with how old I am. And say, I want that. And then whatever that is to you, go for it. Don't let anything stop you from getting it. Whether it takes you a year, five years, 10 years, doesn't matter. Get it. Don't stop ever, okay, until you get it. Then what will happen is, is you're going to realize that it was just one thing you wanted. As you experience more things in life, you're going to determine that, oh my gosh, I also want this and I want that. And then you're going to think about all the different areas of your life, your relationship with God or a higher being, whatever that might be, the relationship with your family, your friends, the love of your life, your health and fitness, your career and finance, your philanthropy, you know, giving back just like I am to you right now, expecting nothing in return. There's lots of different areas of life and we have to figure out what's the priority today. So you have to figure out what's going to be your purpose of life. That's unique to you. But my advice is to, to, that I can share with you is once I learn that I can have and be whoever I want in life, and it's up to me and only me, not my parents, not my teachers, not my managers, not my friends, but me, it changed my life. And I got started at the age of 18. Hope that helps. Next question comes from Terry. And Terry says, what is the best way to create trusted relationships with large independent builders so we can do business with them. Okay, Terry wrote a novel in his background. So I'm gonna read it all, but this is a novel. This is way too much information, but it's okay. So let's get started on this. I'm gonna need a big breath. Hi, my name is Terry Tucker, and I am a 23-year-old veteran of residential real estate in California. A 23-year-old veteran? I don't think so. You, to be a veteran, gotta be at least you know, 10, 20 years in the business. Now, if you mean military veteran, thanks for your service. I have had a very successful career in real estate, real estate management, and, have, and also have a construction background. I have now launched a business in the state of Washington that helps people who buy a vacant land get it permitted. I have one real estate agent who specializes in land sending me business, my business partner, but I would like to do business with large on your lot builders. I have identified three to four builders who each build in four different states and each build in excess of 1,500 homes per year. I would like to earn some business from each of them in each state. My goal is 10 homes per month from each builder per state, which equals 120 homes per month. We charge $10,000 per home and 2,500 goes to our employees. 
leaving us with $7,495 in gross income. The upside is over $899,000 in monthly gross income. We are $2,500 to $15,000 cheaper than our competition and with volume we can guarantee our vendors plenty of work, thus keeping the entire process moving quickly and helping our builder partners build more homes. I view this as a funnel and the beginning of the funnel is selling land. We are starting a real estate team slash office that specializes in selling dirt so we can control the funnel from the beginning, selling, ba selling vacant land. To the middle where we get the land permitted to the end where we hand the builder a ready to build client. We are also asking for a 3% referral fee from the builder based on the construction costs on the back end. Builders don't want to deal with the permit stuff they want to build. 99% of the real estate agents don't understand vacant land and development, so we stand out there. My partner and I both have construction and development in our backgrounds, along with 59 years of real estate experience. <laughs> I also co-managed a real estate office and built it to the number one Keller Williams office in California and top 25 in the world. <clears throat> So I have the background to do that as well. I believe we have set up something where there is a great need and absolutely nobody doing this from the beginning to the end the way we will. Well, I tell you, it's a clearly articulated background, Terry. I love this that we have 59 years of experience. You're 23 years old, so I would guess that at most you've got six years of experience, which means your partner must be pretty darn old for you guys to have a combined 59 years. This sounds like, and I'm gonna give you some constructive criticism here. This sounds like it was written by a 23 year old. It sounds like somebody who doesn't have a lot of life experience. Uh, something like maybe you've read a lot of books. Um, there's so much in this that I could really go to town with. My first thing is like, if you built the number one Keller Williams business in California, you had to have been making millions of dollars, like millions. Why would you leave something that's making millions of dollars when you're trying to build something now that could be, you know, a $12 million business? Like, why would you leave it if you are, were the number one agent in California? That just doesn't even make sense to me. So there's something off, off there. Maybe you belonged in the office and you just worked in that office that was number one and that's cool. But the way you said it is that you were like the man. And so something is a little off there. Um, so I would need to know a little bit more background. Um, but let me answer your question here because this is a relatively simple uh, question to answer. Going back to your basic question, which is what is the best way to create trusted relationships with large independent builders so we can do business with them, is to go meet them. If it were me, and if you're, you're asking this question, so if you're asking a question like this, no disrespect, but nobody actually taught you how to sell. Because if you were a master salesperson or had any type of real sales training, you wouldn't, answer, you wouldn't ask this question. Here's the reason why. Because the number one step, okay, write this down. The number one step in the sales process of any product or service in the world is to establish trust and build a relationship. And the only way you can do that is to be talking to the person that you're trying to build the trust and relationship with. Now the ways that you do this, and I can't give you a full sales training class right here on YouTube, okay? But you could, you, the best way to build with trust and rapport is to have a background of being trustworthy and have a good reputation. So if you have that, that helps. You could have a great website with maybe some credentials, some testimonials, have third party articles written about you and the success that you've had. That really helps with building trust and establishing a rapport. The next thing is, is you can ask questions. Naturally, in the sales process, when you wanna to get to know somebody, the best way to do that is to ask questions. Be the person asking questions. When you go through deep level sales training, you're going to learn that the person who's asking the questions is controlling the conversation. And they're the ones that are going to guide it the way it's going to go. And that's how you establish rapport and trust, as you learn about them. You're gonna to have to study body language, personality types, and what kind of questions to ask. You know, for instance, you wouldn't go up to somebody and say, well, how big is your company? How much money do you make? You know, what kind of car do you drive? That's not the type of question that's going to help establish trust. The type of question that would help you establish trust is, how long have you lived here in Seattle? Cool, what brought you here? You know, uh, where, were you, where are you originally from? So just pro probing open-ended, not closed questions, but open-ended questions that will get the person to talk. And that's how you establish trust. My advice to you, 
Terry, is if you truly want to learn how to do business to business sales or business to consumer sales, where you are actually going to be meeting and interacting and engaging with prospects and leads, hire yourself a coach. I would be more than happy to introduce you to my sales coach. He, there is no better coach in the United States than my sales coach. He's built two different billion dollar companies. He's independently wealthy and his passion is training salespeople. And there's nobody better at helping somebody understand how to make more money as a salesperson. Would be more than happy to introduce you to him. He is not that expensive for what he does. Um, in fact, he's ridiculously underpriced, but it's because he's so passionate about doing it. And virtually everybody that I've introduced him to has doubled their income within 12 months. Not a guarantee, but this is fact. This guy is that amazing. So get a hold of me and I'd be more than happy to make an introduction to you. But remember, the best way to build a relationship is to pick up the phone, make a phone call, seek an appointment, and go start building a relationship. That's the sales process. Some relationships take time, especially with builders who are very busy. They've got lots of people calling on them. Be mature, act act experienced you're 23 years old so how much experience can you have in 23 years not as much as a 50 year old right but that's okay use it to your advantage use your persistence use your determination use your ambition use your enthusiasm okay dress the pro the proper way ask the right questions and that can help set you up for success okay i hope that i know that sounds simple just pick up the phone make an appointment go talk to somebody but what i find is is simple is the most direct path to accomplishing things. Why complicate it if it's that simple? Okay, hope that helps. Okay, the next question comes from Sean. What a great name. Uh, Sean asks, what are proven and recommended ways to launch an online service and obtain subscribers? The background is, uh, hello, my name is Sean. I am a systems engineer, real estate investor, and entrepreneur. I have developed an online service called Master Estimate based on a tool I created for managing and tracking my real estate projects. I've held a beta test period and I'm ready to announce the official launch of the service. Master Estimate provides a framework for estimates that combine scope of work deliverables with a draw schedule of pro progress payments and completion points. This enables real estate investors, lenders, contractors, and landscapers to know the numbers at project start and monitor the numbers to project completion. I'm going to initially target real estate investors as I get subscribers. I'll enhance to service and increase the focus of other user, other user groups. Okay, so this one's, this one's relatively simple as well, Sean. Um, you, you mentioned that you have beta users. Um, draw upon your beta users to, to, to create the data of the success that they are finding, whatever the success deliverables are. So if your software is going to help somebody, what are those help points? What's the data that substantiates that your software helps them better than any other type of option that they would have in the marketplace today? You have competition. Those real estate investors are doing the business today. So whether they're using Excel spreadsheets or some sort of CRM or some sort of QuickBooks or even by paper, they're doing it today because they're doing deals. I would find out all of the different ways that people are managing these projects today and I would put together a grid like you know like when you see a, a competitor grid like XYZ company provides you know this this and this but my company provides this 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 this, this. we check all the boxes they check three so put together a grid of all the different things that your software does that others don't it's called a competitive analysis and then what I would do is I would get written and verbal and video testimonials from your beta group. So get a select few of at least 10 ideal clients and have them use the software, track it, support them, help them get the most out of the software and, ha and have them let you know how much time it saved them, how much more money it made them, um, whatever, the, whatever the benefits of your software are so that you can substantiate that when someone uses your software versus XYZ, here are the benefits. And you're gonna put that together in a benefit analysis. Um, I've got a coach that I could introduce you to. His name is Dan. He is 100% somebody who would know how to help you put together the deliverables and things like this. 
so if you want an introduction, feel free to reach out to me and remind me that you're the person with master estimate and you'd like a recommendation to Dan and I can introduce you to Dan. Listen, and here's the only, and here's the only caveat that I want to talk to you about because I've seen this happen many, many times. Somebody succeeds in one business and they create a process and then they think, oh, let me go sell my process. And they don't know anything about selling that process in the business. And meanwhile, they're letting this business over here hurt. If you're doing so well as a real estate investor and you're making millions and millions of dollars, my question to you is, is why do you want to go out there and build an entirely new company in which you have zero experience, the software as a service business, which requires an entirely different type of sales and marketing and team? Why would you want to stop something you're doing extremely well at to start something new? So that's something to think about. Now, I can think of a lot of reasons you would give me, but that is something I would strongly urge you to think about. But if you're going to go after the software as a service business, it's a completely different business model, requires a completely different team, and you'll want to learn how to build a SaaS company if that's truly what you want to do. So if you, I would ask more questions around that, but I would get into some entrepreneurial groups like mine, like maybe Accelerator's organization, and uh, get, get involved with some good coaches to help you down this process because it can be a very expensive proposition introducing a software uh, as a service company to the marketplace. All right, hope that helps. Okay, the next and last question comes from Mathepolo. And Mathepolo says, how can I win at network marketing? I'm trying everything and I'm starting to lose hope. I can, I reach out to people even in other countries to join my team. The background is I'm a teacher by profession and hold an honors degree in educational psychology. Okay, um, Mathepolo, well listen, there's only one way to succeed at network marketing and that's to become an expert salesperson and that's it. Think about your industry. The only thing that you are required to know how to do is become an expert salesperson. You're selling a product or service and you're selling a business opportunity. That's it. So I would invest all of my time and energy on reading sales articles, sales books, watching sales courses, hiring sales coaches, and master the skill of sales. Now listen, not everybody's meant to be a salesperson. It takes a very unique personality to be a successful salesperson. Most salespeople are ego-driven. Most of them seek high levels of financial success. They're very goal-driven. <clears throat> They're motivated by money. So if you don't check the box on all these things, network marketing might not be a good fit for you. However, if you are relationship oriented and you are very passionate about the products or service that your company sells, okay, then over time you could slowly build a business by building relationships with people that might want to buy that product or service. It'd be a slow process. Um, but there's lots of people that do it by building relationships. They get involved in community groups, networking groups, charities, uh, other types of giving time and donating time. And they just naturally, through the course of just meeting people, they talk about what they do and people buy from them because they like them and they like the products and services. That's, but that's the only way to win at network marketing is to become a great salesperson. If you'll go into the Ask a Millionaire portal, there is a button for top sales books. I would click that button and download that PDF and I would order as many of those books as you can and get started on polishing up your skills to be a great salesperson. I can only imagine how much certification and reading and training you did to get an honors degree in educational psychology. You're gonna have to put that much energy in becoming a great salesperson. Okay, I hope that helps. That's today's session. My voice is going, but I wanted to make sure and finish. I hope you guys have a great day. And as a reminder, Feel free to submit some more questions. Spread the word of Ask a Millionaire. Your question is going to get emailed to you tomorrow. And I hope you have a great day, morning or night, wherever you are in the world. Peace out.